Just about to get sexy again. Just about to get sexy again. Just about to get sexy again. Hello, hi, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know, my name's Karen and I'm your favorite booktuber. Basically, I don't know about you guys, but I think it's time literary fiction got sexy again. Things have just been off. The vibes have been off. The authors haven't been giving, but finally, things are about to get sexy again, as Julian Barnes pointed out, because Grant had just dropped their 20 hottest, brightest, youngest, sexiest, you name an adjective and they're doing it. They put together this list, there's 20 authors, and I'm gonna talk about them right now. If you don't know what Granta is, that's totally okay because TBH, I didn't know about this list until about a week ago. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm here to deliver everything you need to know. Granta is um, a publisher. They also have a literary mag, and about 50 years ago, exactly 50 years ago, in 1983, the founder put together a list of the 20 hottest, brightest, youngest, blah, blah, blah authors. Thought it was a really great marketing initiative. In many regards, it is. And thus the list was born. That's not why we're here. We're here to talk about the 2023 list. The 2023 best of young British novelist list did something a little bit different this year. They decided to expand beyond the first, uh, I guess, barrier of entry which was in order to be considered for this list you had to have a british passport you have to be a british citizen but in 2023 they've decided all you really need to do is consider britain your home as such we have a couple of people on this list who weren't born in the uk but are nonetheless they are britain's youngest brightest hottest sexiest authors so and i, I don't know if i said this but basically every 20 years pardon basically every 10 years they put together this list and so that's why we got 1983 1993 2003 2013 and 2023 i didn't really need to go through that math but i did it okay the list includes graham armstrong jennifer atkins sarah Baum, sarah bernstein natasha brown eleanor catton eliza clark tom crew not to be confused with Tom Cruise, Lauren Amy Curtis, Camilla Gordova, Isabella Hamid, Sophie McIntosh, Anna Metcalf, Thomas Morris, Derek Owusu, Kay Patrick, Yara Rodriguez Fowler, Saba Sams, Olivia Sujic, and finally, Eli Williams. Those are our 20 youngest, hottest, brightest, sexiest authors for 2023. So Foils did this really cool thing <laughs> um, last Saturday. April 30th, maybe, they put together a talk at their wonderful, large, beautiful, glorious bookstore on Charing Cross Road in London, and they had four different panels, and I went. So the first panel was a discussion of 1983 versus 2023. What are the difference between that list, between the that decade? Like, what was happening? What were the issues at stake? One of the first and most obvious things that we can note about the list was that in, 20, in 1983, the list was predominantly male. In 2023, the list is predominantly female. The panelists, a lot of what they were discussing was how the material conditions of 1983 are very different from what they are in 2023. That was the first chat. The second panel was about urban versus rural, um, looking at how different settings can affect one's writing because a lot of these authors do write about places beyond just London. There was kind of this this recognition that maybe writing about London has become a bit passe, it's a bit dull, it's, it's been written, and the authors on this panel were kind of sharing how they feel that sometimes when you write within a rural landscape or a very tight, small setting, you're able to really create something wonderful because those communities can be so insular. The third discussion I don't really remember as much because I was kind of losing the plot. I was getting a little tired. It was a really long day for me. So the third panel, I just looked it up, was called Voicing Our Times, Craft and Form. And it was the most nebulous of the conversations. I remember Natasha Brown speaking about how... So the third conversation, I don't really remember as much from that. 
convo as I would have liked. I know Natasha Brown spoke about how she, when she was writing assembly, had pulled together a spreadsheet of different almost tropes or, you know, plot points within the genre and she used that as a reference point and someone else, maybe it was Sophie McIntosh, spoke about how she has a document on her laptop called Cut Bits. Basically, every time she's working on a draft, the things that she cuts, she puts them to this document and maybe later on they get repurposed at a different point within the novel. And that was kind of the discussion for the most part, I suppose, how they get to their craft. But there was this conversation that sometimes I think the authors felt like when they do interviews with journalists, sometimes a conversation doesn't really focus so much on their craft, but more for more so there's a bit of like tokenism, like what is it about this author that's different, that's unique, that we can pull out and use as, a, you know, SEO buzzwords to make sure that the article does well. The fourth and final talk was writing modern relationships. And this talk was about how the authors are exploring modern relationships. And I think one of the authors had a very clever point where she was like, I don't actually feel like I'm a modern writer because we've been writing, relationships are at the core of so much of literature. The times may change, but people don't. Relationships require communication and people aren't the best at that. Whether it's 2023, 1983, or 1883. We just all suck at communication. That was the talk. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Now I want to talk about Booker. What? Why am I talking about Booker, you ask? That is because our 2023 hottest, brightest, sexiest authors, about 10 of them have books that could be long listed for 2023 Booker. Yeah, things are spicy. Things are spicing up. Now, if you are like me and you dabble in the booker international booker world you might be curious to know which of these books are potentials for the 2023 long list maybe you want to get ahead on your reading maybe you want to check out who the youngest brightest hottest sexiest authors what their work is like so i'm just going to quickly run down these 10 books give you a little one two and maybe you will have read them or maybe this will pique your interest and you will add this to your tbr Let's kick it off. Let's start with Curse Bread by Sophie McIntosh. A little one-liner for you. What happens when bread meets desire? The second book is Losing the Plot by Derek Owusu. This is looking at, you know, the immigrant experience, mother-son relationships, and London. Life in London. Burnham Wood by Eleanor Catton. What happens when you mix a uh, vigilante gardening group with a fancy pants tech entrepreneur who's super rich. Climate change meets capitalism. Then we've got The New Life by Tom Cruise. This is a story about two men who are exploring gay culture in the 1890s. This is also a debut novel. Chrysalis by Anna Metcalf is another debut novel. This is looking at a woman's agency. Can a woman even have agency over her body yet still maintain a relationship with society at large? The next book on this list is Study for Obedience by Sarah Bernstein. We've got a woman who moves from the place of her birth to a remote northern village to take care of her brother and shenanigans ensue. A series of unfortunate events maybe is more apt to say than shenanigans. <laughs> Enter Ghost by Elizabeth Hamid is the next book on this list. This one is really interesting to me. This is a story of diaspora, displacement, and it takes and it takes place in modern day Palestine. Mrs. S by Kay Patrick. Now this comes out in June 2023. This is a story of sapphic desire. We've got our unnamed narrator who enters into a little tryst with the wife of one of her colleagues. Penance, which comes out in July 2023, is by Eliza Clark. This is a story about a murder that takes place amongst a group of teenage girls. The final book on the list is Strangers at the Port by Lauren Amy Curtis. This is a story of a young 10-year-old girl whose best friend is a donkey and they live on an island and then strange men show up and things get bleak, is what I think is going to happen. 
that's the rundown of the list of the books of the 10 books i it's on my agenda it's on my plan to read all 10 of them so far i've read cursed brad losing the plot and i'm halfway through with burnham wood so expect videos on those books shortly if there's something else you're interested in about granta's list or you want me to talk about something else just let me know your wish is my command your desires or whatever. You get what I'm saying. I'm down to do it all. Um, are you planning on reading any of these books? Are there any authors from the youngest, brightest, hottest, sexiest, whatever that you're into? Do you think literary fiction had an unsexy problem? Has this list mitigated your thoughts on whether or not lit fic is sexy? Let me know. That's the real conversation. That's what we need to be talking about. We need literary fiction to be sexy again. And, you know, it's about time someone did it. Thankfully, Granta came through. If not, who knows what we would have had to have done. And yeah, with that, thank you so much for your patience with my ramblings and my repetition of the word sexy. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thanks.